name is John Pickles. I'm Professor of Geography and International Studies at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, um, where I've been for 12 years. And uh, during that time, I've been working very much with uh, Gary Jareffi and Fritz Meyer, particularly through the center. And so global value chains has been a, a central issue. As a geographer, um, the work I do is primarily um, on the global economy, particularly with a focus on Eastern Europe and uh, post-socialist Europe. So the, the research has focused uh, on several industries, but particularly and mainly on the apparel industry uh, and the transformation of the apparel industry after 1989 uh, and its integration into particularly European systems and global value chains. Uh, as a geographer also, uh, the, the debates I'm interested in are particularly about the relationship between uh, global value chains and global production networks. Um, where the question really of regional and local embeddedness it has become a critical question for regional development uh, and geographers have a, a perhaps a, a more local f focus, a regional focus, uh, in trying to understand the uh, effects of globalization uh, and the global economy. Uh, and so um, variously I work on global value chains or global production networks and increasingly I think whilst there are strong uh, sociological and institutional distinctions between the two, uh, I, uh, I think that we're having interesting conversations among those. Um, so um, the work um, I, I've been doing with Gary has been particularly linked through the Capturing the Gains project uh, run out of the United Kingdom with DFID. Uh, uh, and there, uh, that has broadened the kind of discussions we have about the kind of regional interests with, between Latin Americanists, uh, East Europeanists, Africanists, to begin to focus on some of the bigger challenges uh, around the global economy. Um, so uh, I think you asked about the some of the key challenges. Right. Oh, or you're so, going to. So what are some <laughs> of the things that you're learning here at the conference over the last or the Global Summit over the last few days that you can take with you? Yes, you yes. Oh, it's a fascinating uh, gathering of uh, very high-powered institutions who are, the, in a sense, among the key, if not all of the key, or many of the key actors in, that, in the economy, uh, shaping at level of policy, data collection and management, and, uh, uh, and um, really a kind of architecture uh, of the global economy is made quite clear when we hear people from OECD as just now, um, from uh, WTO, World Bank and so on. Um, I, mean, I think what's particularly interesting is the challenge that each of them clearly has in trying to come to grips with the consequences of recognizing that the global economy is now structured and largely through these uh, things we call in global value chains in which certain kinds of lead firm um, um, forms of governance drive, largely drive, the in increasing fragmentation uh, of production and the international sourcing patterns that result. Uh, and so we're having interesting reflections on this shift from a kind of uh, trade theory, trade-based model to one in which we have to take more seriously these systems of asymmetrical power uh, and the networks within which uh, products and services uh, flow. And I think that that's been very clear, that, that in a sense, whilst I think perhaps maybe 10 years ago you would have not found this group gathering together, and if they gathered they would be speaking past each other. I think now in grappling with the global value chain as a kind of uh, unusual uh, object, but the one which is now sort of determining of everything uh, from um, um, private sector profitability, to competitiveness to local uh, innovation systems, clusters. This kind of um, object, the structure of the global economy uh, forces a different a rethinking amongst these institutions and it's very interesting from the conference to see how uh, all these people from different backgrounds are grappling with that question. Yeah. So the final question I have is Looking ahead over the next couple of years, let's say three to five years, what are significant challenges to a, the changing global economy that you see and how can the global value chain framework help to address some of these challenges? Yes, these are big questions, uh, many challenges, particularly working on Europe, but uh, I think every region of the world has its own form of the particular current crisis. Um, I mean, obviously we have the effects of the financial crisis uh, and the ongoing recessionary implications of that, particularly in European contexts. 
Um, and uh, that has led to fundamental and serious regional divisions of income and social segmentation in many, many parts of the world, including the United States. Um, but particularly in small and low-income countries, where you have uh, increasing participation in global value chains, in which uh, value added, profitability and wages have been rising for people participating in some of those chains. At the same time, you have a race to the bottom in uh, other areas and other industries, other sectors and other regions. And you have uh, uh, an increasing flexibility, fluidity and uh, footlooseness of many, many manufacturing industries um, results in large-scale unemployment, and loss, job loss. So on the one hand, you've got clear gains of growth. On the other hand, those clear gains come with uh, social and economic differentiation, regional and social, and you, uh, fundamental crises for uh, the unemployed uh, or the non-worker. Uh, which leads to forms of flexibilization. And all of these are driven by global value chains at one level or another, the benefits and the, the costs. And so the challenge, I think, for all of us is to think uh, uh, for new architectures, new forms of regulation, which manage that process. Uh, we don't have good forms. Uh, systems of accounts are national, not global for the most part. Although, they're, as we heard from the conference, they're building new systems of international and global accounting. Uh, but it's a long way to go. We have very weak architectures for managing public policy. Uh, the national uh, policy arena is seen to be the primary driver, but in many countries of the world, um, the state has very weak institutions. Uh, and in many countries of the world, the state is not particularly interested in forging uh, strong policies which might protect the disadvantaged uh, because it's participation in the value chain is the primary driver. And so opening up the state becomes a kind of critical uh, challenge for, for small, uh, small and, and low-income countries. Now, the consequence is that they are buffeted more quickly, more easily, by the kinds of uh, asymmetrical power uh, and forms of decision-making that the value chain uh, enables. So we need some kind of regulatory framework which deals with this uh, um, system of lead, firm, uh, led value chain. Um, that is easier said than done, uh, and in particular with the rise of the BRICS, the, the large-scale new markets uh, of China, Brazil, um, India, um, with their own lead firms, with uh, already beginning to outsource and expand and create uh, global value chains out of their former state-owned industries, um, now private for the most part, um, it's not entirely clear what the relationship is going to be between the, the northern uh, global value chain, northern-led global value chains, and southern-led global value chains. Um, and so again, this question of uh, institutional architecture, I think, is going to become quite critical. Um, and uh, whether or not the existing institutions uh, are appropriate for that, certainly they're adapting. We just said the conference is about how those institutions are thinking about the effects of global value chains on their business, as it were. Uh, but. Um, it seems to me we're going to need a different kind of regulatory uh, agencies uh, if we are to come to grips with this. And of course, the one argument would be that we're not, that, that it's a kind of uh, market-driven and private sector-driven uh, issue and that the, uh, I the most effective role for the state is to get out of the way. And uh, I think this becomes then a question of uh, fundamental political action. Um, uh, the difficulty with global value chains and that argument is that we've, we've learned since the financial crisis that global value chains amplify the crisis. So crises uh, or, di or ruptures or if negative effects within one part of a chain can pass through the chain very quickly in ways that are maybe quite new. Um, and so I think one critical challenge is how that happens, to understand that, the researchers. And secondly, because it was the financial crisis, to understand the changing role of finance in structuring manufacturing service value chain. Um, we don't know very much about that. Partly difficult to get the data 
um, but partly uh, this is happening quickly, uh, in which new kinds of actors are beginning to, uh, in a sense, become the determining factors within the lead firms themselves. One example would be shareholder value, in which um, um, lead firms like uh, Nike, for example, uh, but other, other, other big firms, have to pay more and more attention to their shareholder value, which has resulted in much shorter time horizons for their reporting. So instead of reporting um, annually or um, that biannually, they're now reporting quarterly or monthly even. Uh, and these, the, the effects of that are short-term horizons in within the planning mechanism, which then drives itself into the supply chain and, as a result, can more easily uh, amplify these kinds of crises effects.